Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to uh, today's session. My name is Nellie Deutsch, and our session is about blogging. Before we get started, if you could just add in the chat where you're from and anything else you'd like to add, the chat is your way of communicating uh, as we go. If you don't hear, just let us know, and uh, one of the uh, participants will help you. And I hope I'll be able to help you as well. So uh, feel free to use the chat box. So let's see where we've got Hamid from Iran. Welcome. I get so excited because uh, we get participants from around the globe, and it's so exciting to connect with teachers and for blogs with students because. We're all learners, and blogging is so very important. Our speaker is here, so uh, let me introduce our speaker, and then we'll get started. Uh, Dr. Brody presented at the Connecting Online this year and last year. She uh, comes every year, and it's, uh, it's not something we take for granted, that people are so generous uh, with uh, sharing their knowledge. Crystal is a teacher, edupreneur, speaker, trainer, visionary, writer, motivator, interdisciplinary global collaborator. She is Associate Professor of Graduate Education and Program Director of the English as a Second Language Teacher Endorsement at Georgetown College in the United States. Her interests include advocacy, technology, and professional learning communities in the areas of English as a second language and world languages in general. And here is Dr. Crystal Brody, right here. She presented at the Moodle Moot for 2013. So it gives me great pleasure to uh, pass on the uh, mic to our speaker. So uh, let's do that right now. Here we go. And I can uh, move the slides, Crystal. Hello. I see a green screen right now. Uh, my favorite color, I must confess. Hello, there you are. You came out of the green and into our class. So welcome, Crystal. It's great to see you virtually, and I'm hoping that we'll meet face to face real soon. I hear you very well. Was that in Spanish? <laughs> All right, so Crystal speaks a few okay, languages. Well. I think she knows a bit of German better than I do, even though I've got a German name. No. <laughs> well, oh, you do? I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, German is actually my home language that we speak in my house here. And, All right, uh, so I'm going to let you um, that, that's take over, and I'm going to mute my mic English and take away my webcam. So I'm here in the background. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Well, welcome to all of you that we see. Uh, we got 14 people. Um, where are you all from? I see France, CBA. Bonjour, Devier. Ça va? And we got America. Halina. Hello. Halina speaks German too. Guten Tag, Halina. We have people from Venezuela. Ah, buenos dias. Ecuador. Ah, Argentina. Oh, wonderful. Uh, this is so exciting. And, you know, Nelly uh, puts people together from all over the world. And uh, I, I just get a kick out of this to, um, to speak um, with people from all over the world and work with you. And, um, and thank you for inviting me to give me this time in your life, you know, to be here and to listen and interact. I hope you will interact too. Hawaii. Aloha. Okay. So I'm going to talk a little bit about blogs today. 
And you know, uh, Nelly already told you that uh, I am actually from Germany and uh, came to the United States as an older adult. And uh, so, um, learning communities to me have been really important to um, stay connected with Europe and what's going on there because that's where I'm from. And also to be part of my new learning community in the United States. And so, um, blogs and uh, social network is wonderful, including, of course, Nelly, who does a wonderful job in keeping us all and sharing and creating new knowledge. And the reason I love to work with Nelly's events is because she does exactly what I would like to talk about today in my presentation. And, and I feel so dear in my heart to you what she does. And the um, platform that she affords all of us to get together and learn from people um, that are interested in the same thing. So actually, what I'm talking about today is what we're all doing here today. And so um, I would like with that to um, talk a little bit about the title. Um, you know, a lot of times of us to work in our respective workplaces and um, we duplicate so much of the same thing. And that's kind of sad because um, if we could build onto each other instead of all doing our own thing in our own corner, we could get a lot far farther in life, you know, in our professional and personal life. So that's what I'm kind of framing our presentation by. And, um, and so, um, Nelly, if you would move to the next slide, please. Thank you. So um, I want to talk about two different topics. One of them is, and you can read the small print later when, when you uh, review the presentation if you like to. Um, I want to talk about and professional community. And I want to talk about um, knowledge creation. And I, I do not want to look at those two um, things as synonymous. So if you want to move on to the next slide, please. Thank you. So first, I want to look at how knowledge is generally considered to be created in a conventional, traditional way. Now, if you would move to the next slide, please. Thank you. So in general, uh, it's a um, personal problem, at, um, Crystal. Oh, if one person me? cannot hear, Elena it doesn't says, matter. I mean, it matters a lot, of course. Well? But I mean, better, it's. Uh, Let's Either their louder. connection has slowed down and it needs to pick okay. up and it will. Or, hello, Jamie, or for another reason. So I would just go on unless um, I tell you that we don't hear you. Thanks. Okay, okay thanks, Nell. No. Um, that's good feedback. Um, so we have... Um, um, we define professional communities in general, internationally, as run by and generated by very educated leaders in the field. Those ones are the people whose names we all know in our individuals that are very dedicated to conducting and publishing research. Usually those kind of people have time for research allocated in their work um, tradition. They also usually have funds for research and they have also time allocated at work for time to write and they are also rewarded for their professional for their work professional community in their workplace. So that's what we traditionally have as knowledge creators. So um, you know let's move on to the next slide please. Thank you Nelly. And I want to talk about what the majority of professionals does and uh, how their professional communities look. So in my, in my view, um, I, I participate in being a leader in the professional community because I'm a college professor and I have the luxury of um, you know, doing part of my work in conducting research, publishing, and doing all the stuff I talked about before. But also, I'm working with teachers, and and you can actually use any other group, like business people or whatever. And I work with a professional community of teachers 
And they usually have basic training, not the PhDs and EDDs. They are very dedicated to practical <clears throat> applications. They usually don't have time in their workplace given to them for research, and they definitely have no funds for conducting research. They usually also have no time to write, and they usually do not get rewarded <clears throat> for work in professional organizations like going to conventions or writing professional journals or doing keynote speeches. That usually comes out of their personal time and they have to pay usually for the expenses. So that's a huge difference, you know, and let's talk about that a little bit more. So let's go to the next slide, please. <clears throat> so who is actually the field? Okay, let's move to the next slide. Um, when you look at what makes the profession on a daily on a daily basis, we can ask the question, is it that the people that are in professional organizations, the leaders, the presidents of organizations, or is it the people that are on the bottom? And they are um, actually doing the work every day. So for instance, if we use the group as teachers, um, that's the example I'm using for this presentation, they are in the field every single day. So they are um, working with um, children, they are addressing every new trend that comes down the pike, and that is different in each country, of course. You know, you have all kinds of countries presented in this class, but all teachers in each country are trying to address new trends in their field. All teachers respond to the government rules and mandates respective to their country, and they all try to reach their children, otherwise they wouldn't be teachers. <clears throat> in essence, every teacher does research every single day in their field, and they create knowledge. Because teachers, like all other professionals, need to be purposeful. They cannot just shoot, you know, shoot off and do what they would like to do. Therefore, they are knowledge creators. Let's go to the next slide. As a result, you know, teachers create knowledge, but usually they keep it for themselves. And in America, we use a term that we use from agriculture. I don't know if you're all familiar with it. Silos are tall buildings in which farmers keep um, grains and other um, things they have harvested. They are tall buildings. And we use in education the term, people work in silos. Um, knowledge is created by each teacher each day from the bottom up. So usually teachers do not, in general, read professional journals or research studies, you know, um, to inform what they do, but they create knowledge as it is needed. But unfortunately, um, teachers usually don't share that knowledge with others. And as a result, teachers' efforts are often duplicated where the same a problem is solved by many, many teachers at the same time, which in essence wastes a lot of time, and the creation of knowledge will not lead to building onto each other to create better and higher development. Teachers work therefore really, really hard, but do not always work very smart in not creating knowledge communities. Let's move on to the next slide, please. So, what is the professional practice time? Let's move on to the next slide, please. My idea of doing, um, changing this condition of working in silos, duplicating work, and not moving higher is to connect each other from the bottom up. And this is where I'm actually making that connection to what we're doing here, where people that are interested in using technology and teaching coming together and learning from each other, practitioners, um, how to create um, knowledge together and connecting and building onto each other because um, we all can build on what somebody else already created. You know, for instance, in Nelly's um, organized events that she does, she's a great knowledge creator and curator too. So let's go to the next one. So, in essence, you know, what are the tools, and I, I apologize that I only have Apple products here, but that was the best slide I could come up with. Um, you know, of course, we use any technology 
that's available to us. And again, that's a hook into our presentation uh, framework that we have here today. Teachers need to get used to using technology. And sometimes teachers are notoriously behind their students in using technology. And that really must change. You know, Otherwise, we're never going to take um, ownership of the profession. And we're never the knowledge curators and knowledge creators as teachers. And I say we because I, I was a teacher before, um, before I became a professor. And of course, as a professor, I'm also a teacher, you know, and I'm in schools all the time. So let's move to the next slide. So what are some requirements to share knowledge and make it accessible to everybody besides um, participating in knowledge and events like that? Let's move to the next slide. We need to use a lot more um, technology and blogs, especially. And I'm not going to talk about what blogs are and what purpose they fulfill because we have a wonderful presentation yesterday that's already recorded and accessible by Dr. Liz Mernova, who um, covered that topic. So I'm not going to duplicate that. In the essence, um, to meet the uh, spirit of what I'm saying here, you know, not to duplicate efforts. OK, let's go to the next. So I want to add um, to the idea of using blogs. And I know that all of you know what blogs are. Blogs are web pages on which we regularly post updates and or organize them in categories um, so other people can easily find content. And people can also, depending on the settings, uh, reply and comment on our blog. So I want to add to the idea of blogs the idea of community of practice, which is my common thread that runs through my all my presentations on my professional work because I'm really, really a big fan of community of practice. So communities of practice are really fun things. Like we are a community of practice here today. People are conversing about and learning about how to use blogs for creating and curating knowledge. So let's look at how Wenger um, was one of the inventors of the concept of communities of practice. Um, professional learning communities, how we can define them. So there's people like us coming spontaneously together under a common theme or purpose. Our purpose today, of course, is learning about blogs and knowledge creation. Together, we build trust among members. And I think we, we can see the trust that we build um, by, by seeing the postings in uh, in the chat room, you know, where people share appreciation for each other and um, give con uh, compliments to each other, and that's definitely an evidence of trust. So all this is in order to share knowledge, because everybody who comes to the table is not just a learner, but also a teacher, because you are here because you're interested in this topic, so you have something to contribute, even if it's only questions, OK? So um, then by doing that, we share practice. We share practice of what we're doing in our respective areas. By doing that, we create a collective intelligence. And as I said before, you know, Nellie's um, efforts that she does are so indicative of that, you know, collective intelligence in using technology and teaching. So then that creative collective intelligence. And the cool thing is it's worldwide. And it also is across disciplines, OK? It's not just only teachers or only business people or only computer people. So, um, so we're creating a collective intelligence that becomes then implicitly health knowledge that we can all share. And not only just us, but anybody who can access our classes on the internet can participate in this, make comments, and, and become part of this dialogue, which is so cool. And so with each other, um, you know, we create this community of practice that creates and shares knowledge. OK. We can move on to the next um, slide, please. So another way of looking at it is, um, you know, identity, meaning, practice, and community, all parts of learning. So learning as becoming, it's defined globally, 
but experience locally. And that's so important because all of you are um, members of your local community, you know, in professional ways and geographic ways. We have different cultures, languages. As I said before, I'm speaking German in my house. Um, we all have all of the local experiences, but we define ourselves as globally. Isn't that so cool? And um, learning is actually an experience by having relationships with others and agreeing, agreeing to certain things with each other. So that is so cool. And then um, we also have a feeling of belonging in a shared experience. We belong to a group of others that share with us what it means to be a professional. And then um, we can also share, practice our learning in way of doing, you know, by changing our world, sharing how we imagine our profession and apply what we have learned. So that's just another um, way of looking at communities of practice. Okay, let's go on to the next slide, please. Example, okay. The next slide, please. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So let me go and um, talk about um, this, how blogs fit into this. Okay. So I said before that I'm not going to explain what blogs are and so forth because um, Dr. Liz Miller has already done that in in wonderful way. Um, let me look at, um, for instance, how to see a teacher started because a lot of teachers, well, all teachers, are very, very busy people. They have to every day make decisions, do research, observe, assess, evaluate, and every day um, start fresh, you know, by learning new things about each day. So when I come to teachers and say, oh, yeah, let's all do blogs and do blog communities, you know, they look at me like, yeah, really, as though I really need something else on my plate. I have already, I have so many chores already, so just leave me alone. So how can we get teachers to do that? Well, um, one of the things that I do is training teachers. So I use that um, opportunity when training teachers because they have to take these classes to get them used to using blocks. And um, we, we um, had, uh, in the years that I've been teaching and having tried to create those professional learning communities, I had a, a lot of ups and downs, you know, at first, um, teachers do what you ask them to do because they have to earn their grade, right? But the question is, do they believe in it? Do they buy into it? Do they um, make this an everyday practice or not? So, um, how, how can you get teachers to do this and to see the value in doing it? Well, first of all, they need to start doing them first of all. In the beginning, when I started to work with blogs with teachers, I had them all pick their own blogging tools and their own blogging platform, which uh, generated um, a lot of diversity and variety and so forth, but um, definitely um, made it a little bit for them to share with each other um, because they couldn't reblog as easily from one platform to another. So since I am using um, Word, WordPress as my platform, um, I asked students lately to all use WordPress, and I showed to them in a webinar how, how to reblog from each other. And since they have learned how to reblog, blogs have become so much more popular, and, and they really love using them. So um, I showed them in a practical webinar movie how to use web blogs and um, how to build them and also how to reblog. And so um, then they learned to make their own blog specific to their school and to their personal situation in their school and to make them leaders and connect with other teachers. And um, they started by reblogging things from each other's blogs. And you know that was my first step of getting them to embrace the idea of building onto each other's work and not starting everything from scratch, which is really cool. And then uh, they create their own blogs now and share them with their own schools because, um, you know, uh, when they want to share something with their colleagues, they pretty much do not find any day during the time during the teaching day 
to sit down with anybody and really delve into a professional discussion. They're so busy, and then they come home, they have their families, they have volunteer things at the school, they attend events. So then there's no time left, but when they use blogs and give each other the blog address, then anybody will um, be able to access blogs in their own time. For instance, when they wait for their kids, they go to their phone and access a blog in their car. Or at night when the kids are in bed and they have time to go to the computer and read their emails on Facebook, they go to the blog. And all of a sudden you do have that dialogue, but it's asynchronous at the time when everybody has time to do it. And um, it kind of is really a big um, paradigm shift um, from um, the usual teacher relationship, which is usually face-to-face, -face. and for teachers to taking it online is a huge stretch. But they're really getting to love this because everybody can be on their own schedule. Um, so um, lately, I ask all my teachers, um, each class, to build their blogs, and of course they also go to a program with me, and at the program ex exit they show their entire blog at the end. Um, and um, I ask them to put things on the blog like movies, in which they demonstrate best practice in short three to five minute videos to each other. Because everybody has time to watch something that's less than five minutes, but nobody has time to hear about a long lecture. And um, and so um, people will um, will take that time and, and listen to something and reply to it. And in replying and commenting, they again become part of that professional dialogue and propel each other higher. And so I had my teachers do videos on how to use certain standards in class or how to teach math in third grade on a certain topic or, you know, whatever it may be. And you can apply this to any professional situation that you are besides education. Um, and uh, I have them do in their vlogs, um, you know, videos about other cultures and countries. So, so they do culture videos about people from Nepal, about people from India. And so this is so cool because um, when, when somebody in the United States <clears throat> as a new student that comes from a country of which they know very little about, for instance, say Nepal. Um, sadly, a lot of people don't know much about Nepal. So then when my teachers in my classes make a video about Nepal, the language, the culture, the religion, gender roles, and so forth, and put this on their blog, the rest of the school is just like, really? This is so cool. This saves me so much time to do all this research. I really want to read this. And then they um, may add something to it later, you know, when they work with the family and the students and they become aware of something, add this to the blog, you know, and create more community. Now, likewise, in Kentucky, where I live, some other teacher in another district may have a kid from Nepal in their class next year. And so they go to our blog collection and find out, oh yeah, there's something in Kentucky already posted about people from Nepal and how to teach them in Kentucky. So they go, this is really cool. So I'm going to use that video and share it at my school by reblogging it. So I don't have to start from scratch anymore, but I can reblog something another teacher already did. So this way we build knowledge level by level by level over the whole state and we built this incredible network of knowledge that every teacher can access and then other teachers contribute what they experience in their school. But they don't have to do that research on Nepal anymore, but they can then focus on, for instance, how people from Nepal specifically struggle in learning English, you know, instead of talking about the culture and religion because that already exists. Does that make sense? So. Um, you know, this way we, we built this web of knowledge throughout the um, whole state or even beyond. Um, it just so happened that um, over the time that I created my blog, in which I also post all my students' blogs, um, the teacher blogs is now read by over 250 countries. So I created it for Kentucky, but it just so happened that people from over 250 countries um, are joining into the blog which is so cool because now 
when I talk about Nepal, you know, a person from Nepal or a person from Congo reads the blog and actually posts their personal experience or reads the blog and, and checks on um, the truth about it. So, um, you know, it's really amazing in the short time how this has taken off, you know, how the blogs have helped teachers. Now, I do have to say that um, I tried first to create wikis or other type of web pages and it just did not work with the teachers. That was too complicated for them and they, they did not like to use them. And so I abandoned all the wiki work and I'm just now doing only blogs which are really working well. And also, they really become a wonderful expression of the individual teacher and what kind of teacher and person they are because they personalize them with their own personal pictures, with what's important to them. And just by the way, they create their categories on what they choose, you know, that says a lot about them and what's important to them and can also be used like when people apply for jobs somewhere else, you know, um, to show evidence of their participation in the field. So if we want to go into the next, uh, oh yeah, the examples that I have here are, um, you know, some uh, of the um, uh, category, some of my teachers blogs that I posted on my uh, web page and also some of the videos the teachers posted on their, um, on their blogs, you know, so you can see some examples of what they have done in their classes. So practical examples of what I'm talking about. So if you go to the next uh, slide, please. Thank you. So evidently, you know, it's not a one-time shot. You know, you cannot have a blog and put something on there and let it sit there. It just takes um, some um, some work. And the coolest thing for me as a teacher is um, that now I see, um, you know, in my um, dashboard on my blog, how many times my former students that have been uh, not with me for quite a while are still reblogging stuff from me and from each other. And so I, I see that every single day and it just makes me smile because I see that they don't have to do it anymore for class because they don't take a class with me anymore. But they still do it to keep up their love and um, it shows me that this really took off with my teachers. So practice makes perfect, you know, if they do it in each class and they continue to do it, um, they become much more proficient because a lot of people are really struggling for um, using widgets or building the categories or making, um, building the look and feel of the, of the page. And I found as a teacher trainer that it's really useful if I have webinars in which I show teachers how to do that, um, make them kind of, I'm modeling what I'm preaching, you know, I'm showing the teachers to do something that I ask them to do for their colleagues and with their colleagues. And so they become a community of practice with each other, with me, and with all the future and past students that were in the program and other teachers. We need to find a common tool. So as I said before, you know, using different um, pub, different platforms for using blogs did not work as well as using the same platform. So teachers had already used another platform before I asked them to try to import it into WordPress. And it all needs to be made easy, you know, not, nothing fancy in the beginning. And as they get more used to using blogs, um, they advance and uh, make it more um, sophisticated in uh, the tools they use. They need to build awareness of the power, the power that uh, using blogs give them to share professional knowledge with others. Building self-confidence. That to me is one of the most important things because teachers notoriously um, do not look at themselves as knowledge creators and researchers. Um, they think researchers are the other people that have titles like PhDs and so forth. But honestly, every person that's a professional is a researcher too because they need to make um, database decisions all the time but they're not used to sharing it with others or to be acknowledged as a researcher. And when you do a blog, you put yourself out there as a researcher, so to speak, by sharing knowledge that you researched, and um, all of a sudden you become a leader and researcher, and that makes you a lot more um, proud of 
who you are as a professional, you know, and, and you not put yourself less than somebody who is a professional leader in a high gloss magazine that costs thirty dollars. And also it builds trust amongst teachers because the teachers often also are notorious in considering their own classroom as their kingdom and um, usually um, oftentimes don't let other people peek in. But when they share on blogs and they um, share best practices and videos from their classrooms, then they also build trust with other teachers um, to look at them as equally um, interesting what they do and, and they, they share um, in collaboration instead of um, being in isolation and silos as I said before. And therefore I say trust yourself you know more than you think you do. And that is so true for teachers. Teachers do not trust themselves um, to know stuff. And we just need to stop that nonsense. Teachers are trusted with the most precious commodity we have on us, that's our future leaders, our children. And they need, need to be they can need to consider themselves as the biggest leaders in the world. So um, then uh, let's go to the next slide, please. So then uh, with, with using blogs, I also added a little mix of social networking to our, um, to our blogging activities. I have, um, you know, um, Twitter, Twitter, I have um, Facebook pages and a, a secret group, or not a secret, but those groups that only people can be admitted that are alumni and members of the program so they are comfortable sharing stuff. But I also have an open page. And interestingly, um, in the in my groups on Facebook, you know, I have a lot of professionals, like book authors in the field, um, you know, people in the professional organizations that over time uh, joined the group. And it's interesting that the people on the top joined the people on the bottom, coming together in the social networking and sharing with each other and learning from the people in the trenches posting stuff and then adding to it from the bottom and top also which is really interesting that was not intended by me but it's just something that happened and it's really fruitful because both groups are learning from each other i give you an example of that um one of my students said um she is in her second grade um esl classroom which blog um you know which blog platform would be best um, used for children for privacy reasons and protection and America is notorious in legal issues so um, within a couple of 24 hours I had people from three countries answer um, what blogs they use in their countries and um, what works really well and give examples and so my teacher chose one of them and looked at them, chose one of them, and started using it. And so that was one of those cases where um, the people that I had started social networking with internationally and worked with um, connected on my Facebook page with my students. And so we had a, you know, a really interesting mix. Next stage, please. And all this ended up, of course, in the blog. So, um, you know, in summary, um, I use blogs to create communities of practice in the field um, and make teachers look at themselves in a different role as um, leaders in the field, as professionals that can answer questions that don't have to wait for the once a year um, research magazines to come out or what, you know, what the people up there in the clouds decide is important in the field. But what is important in the field is what makes the field tick on the bottom. And sometimes they're a little bit disjointed, you know, because the people on the top, uh, they're looking oftentimes in the bigger picture. They look into the future. And that does not always help somebody who is on the bottom doing the everyday chores. So I, I think that I want to kind of you know, mix up those levels and uh, make the teachers run the professional development and run their own learning, identify what they need to learn, and then use platforms like this one um, to talk with each other and learn from each other instead of waiting for the once a year convention where important stuff happens, you know, I don't want to discard it, but 
does that always help the person on the bottom to do a better job? That's the question. And I say no. And I say let's take our profession into our own hands. Okay. So um, with that, I'm going to open it up for questions to my peers. That's here. awesome. Thank you, Crystal. And, yeah, we um, have enough time, which is okay. great. All right, because Halima was concerned about having time. So time for questions. If you'd like to ask a question using questions? the mic, I can pass on the mic to you, or you can just add questions uh, in the chat. I could listen to you forever, Crystal. Pardon? Uh, just raise your hand. I would love if people would use the yeah, mic. Yeah, I hand. totally agree. So, yeah, just raise your hand. There's a hand, raise hand If I could hear feature. your voices, that would be great. Or just uh, let me know in the chat. Okay, diversity in languages in different countries. Okay, so um, before you type your questions, let me first go to what Hamid is saying. Um, diversity of languages in different countries. That's an interesting question because just right now, when we did the last Moodle MOOC, um, Moodle MOOC, I offered my first German class, and it was kind of a little bit of um, um, a mixed bag because um, even though the announcement was clearly in the German title, and it said in the announcement that um, that was the presentation going to be in German. But the majority of the participants uh, did not expect to hear German, and they were a little bit, um, you know, taken aback and then left the presentation because they didn't know that. Um, well, you know, um, first of all, we can start in our own community. For instance, if somebody um, speaks Arabic, and mostly Arabic. Um, that is a huge, huge population world that they can reach, right? How many countries speak Arabic? Oh my God, you can reach so many countries. The same with Spanish, the same with German. Um, if we have, you know, if we connect with people in other countries that use the same language, we can already use a very large population. And maybe there's a number of people in the Arabic or Spanish population that also are fluent in English, and they can then cross over into um, another language group and bring back what they learned from that language group into their own language group. So I think that languages in the future become less important, less important as a dividing factor and building walls. Uh, I think that. Um, when you start locally and branch out, and then other members of your community that know other languages can then branch out in other networks, I think that um, the knowledge is going to be accessible. So I don't see languages uh, so much as a hindrance um, of creating such networks, as we can see with Nelly here. Okay? Evidently, most of us use English, but um, I think we can also, uh, Nelly's group also uh, has Spanish. Presentations and so forth, right? I guess we start locally with our, maybe with our own colleagues in our own school, in our own community, in our own city, with your friends and branch out from there, yes. Thomas Hodgers, um, I've seen Thomas in many um, different um, um, groups. Thomas does work in English and Spanish, for example. Oh, and there's um, Nelly giving a course in Arabic and English. Okay. So, you see, this is actually happening everywhere, you know, that language uh, is not really in a wall anymore, and people looking at language less as a uh, divider, you know, between people. Okay. So, any other questions? I still want to do a German presentation, like for German people. Um, and I hope that I can do this next time. Okay. 22 countries speak Arabic, yes. And there are many more Arabic speakers in the rest of the world that live like in America or they live in Germany and they also speak Arabic. Don't forget immigrants and immigrant families. Like my daughter is born in America, but she's a German speaker. So I think that the whole like, thing is um, not so much a dividing factor anymore. Okay. 
So, any other questions? Oh, Halima. Okay. Yeah, I'll Can try to Halima do that. Get, I just hope um, that it's the, working. The microphone Please, thing? if you want to speak, make sure that um, that your mic is working. Test it just before so that we don't um, go through a hard time. Our ears are very sensitive. I want to answer to Yeah. Uh, I want to answer to uh, while we while Halima is speaking, out, I want to talk to Konya. Um, also, I mentioned I see. Um, there are a lot of people that participate in this. Halima, hello. Okay. Fürs mich die ein paar Worte in Deutsch sagen. Und äh, ich habe sehr gern ihre Klasse, die ich äh, beigewohnt hatte früher. Ja, sie remember that. Und warum? Äh, ich habe die Universität absolviert, die auch mit Bochum Universität gearbeitet, hier in Usbekistan, in Taschkent. Ich auch. Okay? Und ich werde, ich, ja, ich werde Ihnen mitteilen über Ihre Pläne, okay? Und now in English. Uh, Dr. Neri, you know that preparing the class for Visik and conducting class is not the same for us non-native speakers. Therefore, I ask all, all, all people our friends, our colleagues being with us together to help us to edit our uh, Google Drive documents. I sent two uh, links and I prepared four classes. The fourth class is Sole. It is the best uh, English teachers in Uzbekistan. They are working under the slogan Soul, Soul, Soul uh, Self-Organized Learning Environment. Okay. The next is uh, dedicated to the uh, same if, um, uh, also events. It will be dedicated to the sale of teachers because we have a degree here in Uzbekistan, seven subjects to teach in English. Also, there are things in engineering, mathematics, technique, and all things uh, dedicated and combined with computer. I teach, okay, I teach marketing, I teach business English. This year I partic participated very you know, so keen in this TESOL and I get certificate business English. And I prepare a business English class. But uh, ich möchte gerne natürlich eine Klasse in die deutschen Sprache geben. Wenn Sie nicht dagegen sind, meine die Kollegen aus den United States of America und wir haben so zusammen in Bochum gewesen, dann könnten wir ein, ein zusammen, also zusammen diese Klasse vorbereiten, okay? Ja, Herr Lima, ja. können Sie mich hören? Danke, ja, danke, ja. Äh, ich kann natürlich meine, mein Deutsch nicht äh, vergessen, ja, und äh, hier, ja, oh, oh, I had no idea what that. Ah, Dr. Nelia, I said that I am very ready and will be very thankful to this lady from uh, United States because we were together in Ruhrgebiet at the Bochum University. We have a great connection with this university here in Tashkent. Zusammen, together, eine virtuelle Klasse hier zu organisieren, okay? Es wird sehr, sehr great sein, Akzent, deutsch Akzent in Usbekistan und in Deutschland so und in Amerika zu hören und zu vergleichen, okay? Okay, und, ähm, oh, Crystal Brody, ja, yeah, the same university, yes. Oh, das ist uh, sehr, so, ja, yeah. mm -hmm, so okay. Und, äh, again, I ask you, please help us, non-native speakers, to edit our classes. All classes are in Google, Google documents. You, I don't know if you look my classes. I prepare it all things by myself. And I would like to make the very pictures with pictures locally under the slogan "Think globally, but act locally." All things about Uzbekistan. But I have difficulties with, with English, of course. Please, please support us, native non-native speakers, in preparing our virtual classes. And I think that knowing what uh, class will be, what uh, topic will be, is much more interesting. Be prepared, okay? That's all things I would like to sing. Dr. Nelly, thank you very much. Many kisses. 
Viele Küsse für Sie. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alima. Thank you. I am. Thank you. Thank you so much, Crystal. This is very exciting. I had no idea Halima spoke German. I feel embarrassed with a German name like Deutsche Müller. I don't speak it. I think Jamie. Really? Mule? I didn't know that. <laughs> you know, Nelly, you have. Um, Maybe we're related in the end, Crystal. Name is my grandmother. <laughs> she was yeah, she was in Mule. Yeah. Well, my father's from Budapest. Well, I'm trying to pass on the mic to Jamie. We've got a few minutes to go there. <laughs> Hello, Jamie. Me? It's a small world. Uh, let me try it again. So, um,. Jamie speaks a few languages too, including, I believe, Japanese or maybe Chinese. Oh my gosh, John, it's three o'clock in the morning. Wow. John, would you like to um, comment, add a comment with your voice at three o'clock in the morning? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Uh, so let me let me just add a couple of comments. So the one thing I'm I, I'm so excited about that comes out in this class particularly is how much diversity we have, but also how much connection we have in this class. So maybe um, one of the next challenges would be to offer some more multilingual classes. You know, so we can expand. The base of people that are able to follow the classes, you know, and maybe we can also build like a database or a blog of resources. Like um, um, Halima said, you know, she has built these amazing resources and she sent them to me, and I'm just blown away by what she created. So the next step would be um, maybe to create a place where we can all share. Um, the resources and classes and so forth we created in different languages, like Halima's our own German that she sent to me. Um, but, you know, would that not be a nice thing? And I don't know how with IQ could help us in doing that. Maybe like a Moodle class that has different sections for different languages in forum form or something. But I'm just like, so, um, how should I say, like, I'm really, um, intrigued and um, I want to just, just create something with all of you, you know, where we can share all the gifts that you can bring to the table, you know. Just thinking about postings in Arabic and postings in Japanese and what other languages is so exciting, you know, um, Hebrew, Greek, all the beautiful languages and how powerful that would be. And then we can still talk, maybe in English or Spanish I think or Jane, German, whatever. I think um, Jamie is see, on, but Crystal, French as well, of course. Courses, Jamie, well uh, you've got the mic. I'm not sure whether you're speaking or not. Jamie? Mic too crazy. Are you there? <laughs> the mic's open. I don't know. The mic is open, but maybe it's not. Yeah, it seems to be open. Oh, no, he just um, Jamie. He muted it. May not work. Okay, anyone else who we've... Yeah. Go ahead. Crystal, sorry. So, anyway, what do you think? I said, Nelly, what do you think about my idea about creating like a, a I think that would great, be great in the um, in the current Arabic. We could add other languages. Uh, what my friend um, Muhammad from Egypt suggested is that I will be. He knows English as well, so it'll be for students or teachers from. Um, who speak only Arabic, he would be translating, I would be working as well. So it would be a, a translation, but we could have it in addition to Arabic. We could have it multilingual and have German and French. And so I suggest everybody join and we'll just uh, make it multilingual. There it is. Polish, 
Resources. Yeah. So you know, I'm not thinking that, that everything should be translated or anything. It's just like making available resources in other languages to people and bringing more people to with IQ. So yeah, together, I, I, it's called teaching. You know, that they feel it's they called teaching with technology. Teaching with you know? technology. So it's basically uh, for educators, this but it, everybody's an educator. Uh, when it comes to sharing information these days, right? Well, anyway, I'm so excited, and um, you know, I'm, I'm, as oftentimes, you know, you learn more. Right. Right. Well, anyway, I'm so excited, and um, you know, I'm, I'm, as oftentimes, you know, you learn more when you teach something than. Uh, than not. So I learned a lot from you guys today, and I learned a lot from your ideas, and I feel really thank inspired. Thank you. Thank you so much, Crystal. And empowered thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. And it is truly learning together. And Thomas knows that he asked me a question. Nelly, are you here to learn? Um, because I came in as a learner, and as I was in twice, and as a teacher. So it's kind of funny, but it's true. Um, as you all know, and I publicly say it, Crystal, just like you just said it, I teach to learn. Uh, that's the only way I know how to learn is by teaching. So um, that's what it's all about for me, as I guess for you too. So thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Yeah. Well, uh And guys, you can uh, enroll into my tweet, Twitter. You can enroll in my um, blog, whatever you know. And there we are. With me, uh, if, Dr. Nelly, if you go to the next slide, real quick, before we forget that. Yeah. So that's why you can get in touch with me. Okay, we don't want to forget that. Uh, you can write to me. Thank or, you, everyone. Um, this was recorded on YouTube, my, um, so um, social networking and so forth. for those of you so who, are, who keep asking, you know, it's so much mm -hmm. easier to get it on YouTube. Uh, it'll be on YouTube in a couple of hours. Merci beaucoup. We've got French there. I love French. So yes, join the course. I'm going to put it in the chat again. Join that course, and we're going to make it multi-language, not only Arabic, but every other language. Okay, Crystal, you're invited to join as well. So thank you, everybody. Add your feedback. We had a great speaker today. Thank you, Crystal.